When I saw Becca, she just wanted to star in the school play. She loves acting. That's what she wanted to do. And she was having difficulty because she was having difficulty with getting around. And if the lights were dim, she couldn't maneuver around, and she felt a bit unsteady. So uh, looking back, it actually went back a little bit further. So um, at that time, when she was about 10, she had, had uh, started to have progressive problems with incoordination, balance, and then recently, what we call nystagmus, or this movement of, of her eyes. And then she had uh, difficulty with fine motor skills, such as putting a key into a keyhole. And so all these things were culminating. She had an MRI. This is her MRI. It's absolutely normal. It's brand spanking normal. And of course, you want to make sure that there's not an abnormality a stroke, a Chiari, or anything like that. Her brain is absolutely normal. So uh, review of systems. When, when you see a patient, you want to go through all the systems. So in case you didn't ask the question, it'll come out when you ask this. So she did not have any loss of cognitive skills, which says that her cerebrum is working the way it should. Uh, should. She was not having swallowing problems, so her brain stem was working. She had no bowel or bladder issues, so it doesn't seem like it's a spinal cord problem. She had no back pain or extremity pain. She did have a history of asthma. She did have a history of scoliosis. She had migraine headaches. And there was this vague thickening of her heart wall on an echo. And when we got down to her reflex, she said, well, I, I don't have reflexes down there. I said, OK, well, how do I tie all that in? So she had been hospitalized in the past for asthma. Her developmental milestones were all fairly normal. Except for riding a bike uh, at five, uh, normally at about five years of age. So really, her birth history really was, uh, you know, really not not very impressive as far as that goes. She was born to a 21-year-old firstborn, uh, full term, uncomplicated. She was seven pounds, 11 ounces, no perinatal problems. So you can't. You know, say it was a, an issue there. No family history of unsteadiness, ataxia, or similar neurologic uh, signs or symptoms. And you guys can chime in at any point if you guys hear something. And then uh, <coughs> social social history. She wants to be an actress. She's kind of changed that, and she she can tell us about that. But she's still she's going to do something big. Mark my words. Um, so she had testing by Dr. Pauli, but the testing didn't fit what he thought she had. He thought she had Friedrich's ataxia. So the heck's Friedrich's ataxia? We may or may not have time to go into it, but I'll we'll go just briefly. So I actually saw Rebecca the very first time was in the EMG lab. And that's a very nice place, right? We shock nerves and it's a, I'm gonna bring that machine in. I'm gonna get some of you guys to volunteer for extra points. So, uh, you know, we shock the nerves and we look to see if the sensory and the motor nerves are working. And lo and behold, she had no sensory responses. They were absolutely gone. And that was very, very helpful in determining where we go from here. So her uh, exam was uh, within normal limits, including head size. As you can tell, she's a delightful, intelligent girl. She had a little bit of scoliosis. She still has. And then um, on exam, her mental status is normal. She's absolutely brilliant. Uh, she's got nystagmus, which we're going to see uh, at rest and with gaze. She had no tongue fasciculations, which tells you if the brainstem is working the way that it should. And her motor exam is really normal, except she doesn't have uh, deep tendon reflexes, which we'll check. And she does not, she did not have a Babinski sign back then, but she had high arched feet. So we'll see how that, that plays. And then we'll get to the sensory exam, we'll see that certain modalities were intact, and then others did not, uh, did not work as well. And then um, she had some difficulty with gait, and she still has, but she's a trooper. She gets around. Nothing's going to stop her, let me tell you. Uh, and then she had some problems, as she had described before. And I think we will stop there and then bring Becca up. Yeah, do you want? And we'll just watch Becca just walk over here. And I don't know. Can you? Can you just so everybody, I'm not going to let you sit yet. Okay, so that way. And let me just have you walk down.
Yeah, yeah back, to, back to the chair up there. And then one more time, then we'll, we'll sit down. And then we'll get you back right here. Was that hard? Yeah, a little bit. What, what, why? I don't know, I want to just, it, it's okay most of the time, but I just kind of stumbled. Is it, is it painful? Yeah. So I'm going to take just some tools out and I think the first thing we'll do is concentrate on your eyes. She's beautiful eyes. I like the, the tint in her hair. I don't know if she were my daughter, though. I might not say that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, the other, I'm the other dad. So I want you just to look out into uh, kind of the back of the room. Yeah, that's great. I just want you just to... You guys... And then, Becca, I want you to look at the tip of this, and I want you just to follow it. Um, you can see some stagnus. And then I'll just have you look just straight to the back. And then we'll just keep the camera on there. And you'll see these sudden darting movements, right? That's what we call them stagnus. When you become a neurologist, supposedly your significant other is supposed to make you this optokinetic nystagmus tape. And it's to follow, it's like following a train. So as you see a train going by, there's a slow component and then there's a fast component to correct. So those are all very important movements that we look at. So I'm going to try not getting in the way too much. And just. And so she has actually normal where she has that, but in addition to that, she has that nystagmus. So certain parts actually work quite, quite well, not a problem. And then we'll just. See how the stagnus goes up there. So it's very important for those movements because different parts of the brain tell you, okay, look up, look down, look to the sides. I want you to put one of these on the stick. So it's probably me. Um, <laughs> so I want you to put your hands straight up. And I want you to close your eyes. And she comes a little more unsteady with her eyes closed compared to eyes open. Okay. And I want you to take that finger, touch your nose, touch my finger, back in. Now we go. Okay. So I'm going to come down here and look at Becca's knees. And in, in somebody Becca's age, the reflexes should be very easy to get and having difficulty get. Okay. And interestingly, when you get that, it's it's almost um, a a dud type feeling. But that's not specific for this condition. You could see that with the neuropathy. You could see that with somebody with Guillain-Barré syndrome, for example. And if I come down here. It's the same thing. The hammer just kind of bounces off and doesn't give the normal, normal uh, response. Can I take your shoes off? Okay. So this is just a tongue blade, and I'm just going to break it. It's a little bit sharp. Sharp? Sorry. And there? Sharp? Okay. Let me let me do this a little harder. No. <laughs> Sharp, pretty sharp. So her her sensation pinprick is pretty normal actually. And I'm gonna have you stand up and do so next. Okay. So I'm gonna have you just stand straight up and get away from that tape. I'm gonna come behind you. I'm just gonna be back. Just don't know where you are in space. No, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll... 
Can you see if she has the, the Babinski? Okay. Sure. So I'm just going to grab a click here. And I'm going to start from the lateral aspect, come in towards the ball, and then just bring it out. And this is what we would call, what, what would you call that? Absent. Absent. Some of us would say mute. So either it's present or it's absent, or you could say mute. Okay? And that's important because that tells us the corporate spinal tracts are, are not involved. So what happened with, with Becca was we went back, we looked at the testing that they did, and Friedrich's ataxia is a condition to where there are abnormal triplet repeats on, on a certain allele on uh, a protein called frataxin, and it's supposed to be quite expanded on both sides. She only had one that was expanded, and on the other it was not expanded. And so because we had all this other evidence, it looked like she had it. So what we ended up doing was actually doing DNA analysis and uh, sequencing the gene of the one that was not expanded. And lo and behold, she had a mutation in the other allele that actually caused it to not function. So she, had, she basically has a compound heterozygous state to where it's essentially the same as Friedrich's ataxia, but for a different reason. So again, it all came through the history, it all came on clinical suspicion, it all came on the exam. You put all that together and then you say, well, this is what I think it is. Sometimes it's not, but you have to know where to start off with. And then you, and then there are things that look like Friedrich's ataxia, vitamin E deficiency and those sorts of things. And we looked into that and we actually put our vitamin E and then talked about some of the therapies. So one of the therapies that was tried is called Divinone, but that is horribly expensive. Horribly, and you know, we can talk to, to Dad about that. Yes? What's the protein do? What does the protein do? We're not exactly sure, but it's important in mitochondrial function. So if the mitochondria don't make energy, we think that that affects, but why does it you know, only affect certain parts of the system? Why is the sensory system only the posterior columns and not the ones that you pinpoint, with, for example? So that's the big thing about, you know, like fascio-scapular cumulative muscular dystrophy. Why does it affect only the face and certain muscles? There's a lot in medicine. We've done the easy stuff. You guys need to now do the hard stuff. You guys need to come up with a cure for the same way. That's the challenge, right? <laughs>